So what are the implications of Al Burhan's refusal to meet with Hamdan Dagalo to discuss a possible ceasefire and the way forward for Sudan? I mean, I think it's predictable that Burhan was not going to join anything um, that looked to him like it had been already pre-cooked. And so, um, in many ways, uh, Hemeti's uh, gambit that uh, moving around the region and pushing forward a, a narrative that he is ready uh, for peace was um, not really intended to bring Burhan to the table, but rather to say, I was ready to make a, a peace agreement and Burhan is not. Uh, you know, Hamdan Dagalo, as we mentioned, has already met with five African presidents. He appears to have been received very well. Uh, what do Sudanese think about his shadow diplomacy? I, I think Hemeti, uh, he, he knows quite well that his shuttle diplomacy only has a limited impact domestically. Uh, people care much more about what the RSF is doing internally than what its leader is doing in the region. Uh, we have seen uh, Hemeti meet with, uh, you know, successive um, leaders in Africa with Museveni, with uh, Ruto, with Gele of Djibouti, with um, uh, Abiy Ahmed of Addis Ababa, with um, Jacob Zuma, and, and um, you know what we have seen is that they have greeted him as a president. In fact, they some of them have even referred to him as uh, a president, and that internally has rubbed up people uh, um, massively. What we have seen, I think, is that his fortunes internally have actually decreased as his um, reputation in the region seems to have undergone some kind of um, resurgence. Does anyone come to mind, uh, Khaloud, that can bring these two uh, generals together to have some conversation that leads to ending the war in Sudan? You know, these generals have spent so much time, since even before this war broke out in April, um, effectively bringing together their own, you know, their friends in the region. So those who support Burhan are not the same as those who support Hemeti. There are very few who have strong relationships with both. And what this means is that you're going to have to get a coalition of these international actors, making sure that you have those who are closer to Hemeti and those who are closer to Burhan together at the same table with a common cause and a common agenda. That's going to be quite difficult, while um, the regional actors seem to be going all in with their support of these two generals, rather than a support to ending the war. But really, it's in no one's interest to see Sudan disintegrate. It's in no one's interest to see the state completely collapse. And I think as long as that objective is at the foreground, um, countries like, for example, the United States should be able to corral some of these uh, countries in the region, most of whom are U.S. allies, to a unified singular agenda. We haven't seen that happen yet. Khaloud, how would you characterize the cost of this war in terms of the emotional, economic, infrastructural damage that has already been done to the Sudanese people? I mean, I don't think you can put, you know, a sort of a, a number on the economic cost. Um, what we have seen is that there has been, you know, such a big blow to the Sudanese economy, um, such a big blow to ordinary sort of economic activity, production, etc. Because Sudan is was is such a centralized country, and most of those went through Khartoum, which is now, uh, you know, a barren war zone in in many ways. For those who still live in Khartoum and other parts of the country, I think the, the cost of this war is immeasurable. Uh, we have seen um, you know, 19 million uh, children out of school um, and continue to, to be out of school with no hope of, of returning to education. We've seen 80 percent of health facilities being completely out of uh, order and not functioning. We've seen um, countless lives um, lost the numbers that we see right now around 10,000, 15,000. They are, I think, a gross underestimate because we're unable to properly measure the number of people um, who have been killed. But we, we see all sorts of atrocities, lootings, sexual assault, um, et cetera, being carried out, uh, particularly in RSF-dominated areas. And there seems to be no sign of um, you know, ceasing of these um, calamities that are befalling the Sydney's public. And we also don't see any sign that this war is going to end anytime soon. Khaloud, thank you very much for your insight into the chaos in Sudan. Khaloud Khair is director of the Confluence Advisory, a Khartoum-based think tank.